Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Ritz. For those of you who don't know, I am still El Capitan de los Pollitos, the oldest sixth grader you'll ever meet, and still very much that insurgent educator who swears by the credo that children should not have to leave their neighborhood to live, learn, and earn remarkably in a better one. My kids are still getting fatter and they're still getting sicker and 75% of the kids that I see labeled learning disabled would not be if they only had good prenatal nutrition. Welcome to America. Good afternoon, TEDx Manhattan. There it is, Manhattan. Five short miles and six long degrees of separation go between Manhattan and my Park Avenue. Welcome to the South Bronx. The beautiful village, Claremont Village, there it is. Let's talk about some numbers, shall we? It's a data-driven society. 37% of the residents are food insecure. 75% of the people in single-parent homes. Child poverty, Joel hit it on the head. 8% here. 59% of the kids that I see daily, and they all come to school, live in poverty. Graduation rates are going up, 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 it's great. Welcome to Claremont Village. Youth unemployment. 9% citywide, we can change that. I've got 28% unemployment. And every day, my kids line up. And they line up to come to school, and they wait and wait and wait and can't get there. And you know what happens after while they're in school? Six blocks away on Webster Avenue, their grandparent, their parent, or their foster care worker is lining up at a soup kitchen or a food shelter. We've got to do something better. After school, damn it, my kids look at this. The 99 cent menu and bulletproof bodegas with chemical madness and no relationship sit there and stalk my kids. Cheap food and fast food is killing my kids. Does anybody want to eat anything that looks like that? Christ, we know better. We're TEDx Manhattan, we know better. And this is my kids' reality. And here's the craziest thing. In a DOE survey conducted in my school, 50% of the kids cited the biggest obstacle to their school success is not teachers, is not schools, is not testing, is not the grouch. It is their own personal health and wellness. That's the kids. It's madness. So damn it, I'm not willing to accept the things I can't change anymore. I'm gonna change the things I can't accept and I'm here today asking for your support. Thank you, thank you. I'm not a farmer still. I am a people farmer and the kids are my seeds and that's what this is about. We are trying to grow something greater. Three years ago I took this stage and I met you, my family, a group of equity warriors and fueled by your love and wherever my wife is, her support and nobody else's money, I went on a mission to teach kids about food and where it comes from and how it's related to academic performance. And remarkably, and again, with nobody else's money but just a whole lot of, for better word, testicular fortitude, I've been able to travel the country. I've been able to turnkey programs in places like this. Remarkable for a guy who's not even a farmer. I gotta tell you something, the craziest thing is this. From the South Bronx, to the front page of the Columbia News, and we all know what the Colombians thought about me in the South Bronx, and my kids were afraid to let me go. The front page of the El Colombiano. But closer to home, back in the Bronx, back with my kids, this is my harvest. That's what we're growing in school with kids, along to outstanding academic outcomes. And I'm here to tell you, eating a bag of Skittles is not eating across the rainbow, damn it. Healthy food is. And that's what these kids need. And if you expand their palates, you expand their minds. And we expand the possibility so that we can grow something greater. And when Jose pays attention to cucumbers with details like that, and Omar and Henry can tell me that carrots come from out of the ground instead of from aisle nine, or for some nasty lunch lady winging around her in a plastic bag from six years ago, those are the kind of moral victories I love. These are happy kids. These are happy faculty. This is what it's all about for me. Teaching kids to count is cool, but teaching them what counts is so much more critical. And when we teach kids in urban areas about nature, we teach them to nurture 
And when they learn to nurture, we as a society collectively embrace our better nature. I believe, and Green Bronx Machine believes, that healthy students are at the heart of healthy schools. And healthy schools are at the heart of resilient communities. We can do this. We must do this. We are creating a recipe for success. And I'll tell you this, when I tell the kids to be quiet, the plants are having sex. <laughs> I can get a pin drop, but most importantly, I'm thrilled to see kids pollinating plants instead of each other. That's what this movement is about. Talk about community. I want grandparents in schools. And if we can bring food to schools and bring grandparents in, we're gonna change our community. I've got programs where big kids teach little kids how to shop how to be producers, how to be consumers, how to use their food stamps. That's justice. We're doing it interculturally, interracially, intergenerationally, creating a new level of accountability. And 30,000 pounds of vegetables later, my favorite crop is organically grown citizens, graduates, members of the middle class. So all of us in this room, equity warriors, what are we really doing? We're growing justice in the South Bronx. I, me, you, us, that's what it's about. Teachers change lives, advocates change lives, doctors change lives. Together we can change lives. Lights, please. My name is Stephen Ritz, and I am CEO, Chief Eternal Optimist of Bronx County. We're gonna actually grow our own lunch. We are going to grow our own food today. We're gonna go from seed to plate. A towel garden is like this plant, but you don't need soil. And then the water comes up, and then it comes down and rain on the roots. Adults think, you can't farm in the South Bronx. Tell it to these kids, they're farming. For so many, food is the problem. Yet for all of us, food is a solution. We have some of the highest rates of juvenile diabetes and juvenile obesity in the nation. And we can change that. We absolutely have the power to change schools in this generation. I think I still see the seed. That, that happens. Exactly. You mean I can pass it around and they can see the seed Absolutely. in the plant? Absolutely. My job is to teach kids how we can grow food. And I'm asking everyone to roll up their sleeves and get a little dirty and grow something greater. He lets us plant stuff like salad, cucumbers, tomatoes. My fourth and fifth graders came into a classroom with no windows to build a tower garden and literally turned it into a farm. And we talked about how healthy food builds healthy minds and healthy bodies, and where are we doing it? Right here in school. So did everybody plant a seed? Yeah. yeah! The excitement and the joy that these little kids feel putting a seed in the ground and watching it blossom. OMG, as they say, this is their moment. I think he cares about us a lot, and he wants us to learn and have fun at the same time. I'm not a farmer, but I'm planting. I'm planting seeds. He always says like seeds are like people because they need love and they grow and grow and grow to be successful people. To use 21st century technology to generate food and to create this beautiful thing to sit by that you can actually eat is game changing. It's empowering. They're growing. The plants are growing and they're responsible for it. And when they know they can grow their own, they really start changing the way they see their relationship to the world and their place in it. I have the greatest job in the world or what? Now I don't know where the presentation's gonna go, but those fourth graders, let me tell you about those fourth graders. Those fourth graders farm, and they farm their way right to the White House with Bill Yosis, and they actually got into the White House kitchen. Imagine from homeless to the White House kitchen. And a month ago, the White House, I call this from the White House to the greenhouse, Bill Yost has came and cooked with my kids in school in the projects. Yo, that's right, in the projects with food that we grew in school. Take a look, it's so simple. Five days in the life of a seed. And I wanna show you now what I envision for my new future of the South Bronx. This isn't Photoshop. This is my vision for the future in the South Bronx. Ready, set, grow. Welcome to the new South Bronx, people. This is what we need to be doing in schools with kids. It's remarkable, and we're actually doing it. And there they are, celebrating and actually growing their own food while growing healthy academics. I like to say that my kids and I are creating a whole new recipe for success. But let's talk data. 
we have gone from 40% attendance to 93% attendance with Target is Kids. 100% of my kids who finish the program go on to post-secondary opportunities or a living wage job. And in a community like mine, we've partnered towards 2,200 jobs with organizations like Marcel's and so many of you in the room. I call this from hope to the Pope. That's right. That's the new South Bronx story that we're telling. That's the green line for success. It's called embedding this into schools. That's right. It's remarkable. I can't believe, using just what Robert talked about, plant-based education, that I have become a top 10 finalist in the teacher award. Holy crap, literally, if Diane wasn't here, I'd probably curse. I mean, but that's how amazed I am. But that's what this is about. But I've said one thing, and I'll go to my grave singing it. It is easier to raise healthy children than fix broken men, damn it. And that's what we need to do. That needs to be the voice of this movement. That's what we need to do. And that's why I'm putting my stake in the ground right there at PS55. That's where I'm starting, and that's where I'm claiming ground zero for the new Bronx machine. You see, because I have this incredible idea, but it's really because I've been listening to all of you. Imagine a hundred-year-old schoolhouse in the middle of the South Bronx, home to the National Health and Wellness Center at PS55. Why not? We can change the way we eat. We can change the way we learn, and we can change lives and outcomes in this and future generations. And guess what? The kids are on board. They're there early. They're there late. They show up after school on weekends. We want to grow this. The kids, they believe in me. I am their teacher, and they love me. And today, I step before you and humbly put my heart in your hands and hang my future right here with you, my extended family, TEDx Manhattan, and ask us all to grow something greater. Robert said it. For so many, food is the problem. But for all of us, it is the solution. And that's why I'm starting a program that's going to send kids home every week with 100 bags of groceries grown in school in the middle of the South Bronx in a 100-year-old building. How cool is that? We're going to align it to Common Core. We're going to call it the Green Line for Academic Success. And I'm going to send kids from the South Bronx for the first time to the Bronx High School of Science, damn it, because that counts. And skin color and zip code should not determine their outcome in life. So we're out to grow something greater. Opportunity is nowhere, no. Opportunity is now here, and this is our moment. As we say in my class, let us turn up the beat. I'll say it one more time. Let us turn up the beat. And I'll ask you all to join me and say, let us turn up the beat. Tom is right. We're here, and we're coming for you. Now, what we're talking about is absolutely a model for replication. We can grow our way out of hunger. We can grow our way into a whole new economy. This is a model for success. It's absolutely unbelievable. And here I am, four stories up in a 100-year-old building. And you know what I'm doing? I'm turning it into this. That's right, the National Health and Wellness Center, because we can do this. Every child deserves a safe, healthy, nurturing environment, a place where they can grow and dream and learn about a better future. And damn it, I'm determined to give it, and I'm asking you to help support us do it. So get involved. The technology exists. People, we can do this together. We can all prosper. No bucket at a time, but a systemic change. We can do this. We can change lives, and we can change the way we eat. And I ask you to join me here today to grow something greater. There they are, people. The graduating class of 2025. Look at them. I'm partial to the wrestler. But <laughs> Superman isn't coming. There's no man on the white horse coming to my neighborhood. I, me, you, us, we are the ones that those kids are waiting for and their eyes are looking at us and demanding that we get it right, damn it. And the reality is, we can, but we need you to help us grow a greatest pumpkin ever. We have spread this work from the Bronx all around the world. And I come from a place where we have everything to gain 
and nothing to lose. And now that you know more, I expect you to care more. And now that you care more, I expect you to do more. Because we are Americans. The power in this room, you people, my family, is incredible. So we are not the people to accept life as it is. We're not the ones who talk about life as it could be. We need to get out there and do the work that I'm doing to make sure it is life as it should be, that we can go from this to this in every child's lifetime, in every child's backyard. And the craziest thing is there I am in classrooms, growing food in the least likely of places. Hannah, Suhaidi, Ernest, come on out. Meet my farmers. Meet my vegetables. These are my kids. And what do these kids want? More schools and less jails. More books and less guns. More learning and less vice. We want more. More opportunities to embrace our better nature. We want more healthy food. One, two, three. See, say, play, they. Join us. Thank you. Group hug, come on, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Robert, thank you. Tom, thank you. Marcel, thank you. To my wife, wherever you are, thank you. To all of you. This is why we do this work. Please see us outside. We can end hunger in this lifetime. Thank you.